This is RTV6 News at 11, working for you. Now at 11, cities across the country are wrapping up national night out events, including dozens across central Indiana. National night out is a chance for local police to build relationships with the communities they serve. It's also a chance for neighbors to band together to take back their streets from criminals. Tonight's event comes on the heels of a violent weekend across Indianapolis. RTV6's Cameron Riddle is working for you, showing you how community leaders on the Far East Side laid the groundwork for building relationships and changing perspectives. Perception. National Night Out has been part of American communities for nearly 40 years, but until recently, that wasn't the case on the Far East Side. Heard about it by accident, pretty much social media. Um, and I was a little thrown off at the fact that I inquired about the East Side, where it was going to be held on the East Side so that I could attend, and there was no response in the community. <laughs> When grassroots leaders on the east side learned their community wasn't hosting a national night out, they came together and hosted its first party with a purpose last year, with the promise that this year would be bigger, providing a connection to area resources and police that serve the place they call home. This night allowed the, the residents to get together and communicate and share uh, interests and uh, positive things that make the Far East Side more than what's been communicated. Changing the narrative about the East Side and what happens here often starts with changing what meets the eye, like positive interactions with people you usually only see during bad times. That was actually pretty cool. They did Millie Rock. They, they asked my here to do the shoot. <laughs> the memory this community is left with today is part of the lasting legacy city leaders say truly defines the Far East Side. We're about people, we're about love, we're about unity, we're about our, our youth right here. That's what we're about. We're about uh, against crime and against violence. We're about just coming together to show we're so much more than what we've been stereotyped to be. And if we continue to send that message, uh, we'll continue to change the, the narrative on the east side of Indianapolis. Working for you on the east side, Cameron Riddle, RTV6. And the Far East Side Community Council hosted a total of three national nights out on the east. Organizers say they plan to participate again next year. Look like a good time out there. All right, Kevin, we are having some warm days, but still wondering if we're going to have any more rain for the rest of the week. And, and we've had tons of rain in very localized spots tonight. We would rather spread it out, of course, uh, for the big events this evening. It was dry, but look at the thunderstorms, fog of the lightning. That's where you see the heaviest rain down around Seymour now. It's been in Bartholomew County drifting to the south. This rainfall could exceed an inch in an hour's period of time, and the southern portion of Bartholomew County as well sliding slowly to the south and east. This shows us radar estimates of rainfall over three inches just southwest of Columbus, about three inches now in northern Jackson County, and more to come in those areas southwest of Seymour. Temperatures, they're comfortably in the 70s. It's still a bit warm for this time of the evening. Any thunderstorms overnight will quickly drift to the south and we'll wake up to dry conditions. This is where we start your Wednesday 80 by noon with sunshine. What happens in the afternoon and when the next best chance of rain arrives coming up. We'll see you soon, Kevin. Thank you. President Trump plans to visit El Paso, Texas and Dayton, Ohio tomorrow. The two cities are still in shock and mourning after back-to-back -back mass shootings that left 31 people dead and more than 50 injured. ABC's Romina Puga has the latest on the investigations. As authorities search for a motive in the Dayton, Ohio shooting, the FBI now investigating evidence that 24-year-old Connor Betts was exploring violent ideologies. This individual, the shooter, very specifically seeking out um, information that uh, promotes violence. The gunman's ex-girlfriend saying she saw several red flags. He was interested in what makes terrible people do terrible things. The Betts family releasing a statement Tuesday evening. They offer their most heartfelt prayers and condolences. They ask that everyone respect the family's privacy in order to mourn the loss of their son and daughter 
and to process the horror of Sunday's events. Dayton Mayor Nan Whaley saying she will talk to President Trump about gun control during his visit to her city on Wednesday. If you just do mental health and don't do uh, gun work on common sense gun legislation, we will not be successful in this fight. Meanwhile, chilling new details on the Walmart massacre in El Paso. Authorities say 21-year-old Patrick Crucius is showing no remorse in the slayings of 22 innocent people. It appears to be in a state of shock and confusion. Officials confirming that Walmart was not the intended target, but that the Mexican community was. I just never thought it would happen to us. It's going to take time for all of us, you know, to pull through. With emotions still raw, a memorial in this tight-knit community continues to grow. The El Paso shooting, now the seventh deadliest mass shooting in the nation's history. And in the wake of the El Paso shooting, the FBI now warning the community of a possible scam, claiming to be a funeral home and asking for money for arrangements. In El Paso, Romina Puga, ABC News. And the University of Indianapolis is investigating after two students returned to campus last night to find a message of hate. As soon as I walked in, I saw two swastikas on the wall in my room, and I was devastated and just really furious. Sisters Ashira and Mickey Sassan are from Israel. Both are student athletes at UND playing basketball. They are not sure if they were targeted or if the symbols of hate were left from someone who may have stayed in the room over the summer. Either way, they say it's a painful sight. We couldn't believe what we're seeing. This never happened to me in Israel. I never felt like this way before, so it was so shocking. The fact that I found it, you know, it hurts a lot, but any other student who would have walked in on that, I really believe that they need to, you know, report that, talk about it. It should not go unspoken of. The sisters say they are happy with the way the university is handling the situation and that the campus community is being extremely supportive. The president of UND says the university has been in contact with the Indianapolis Jewish Community Relations Council to make sure the appropriate responses are being taken. One of two unborn twin boys has died days after his mother was shot in the head in Anderson. Police say the mother, 29-year-old Alexis Wasson, and the surviving twin are now on life support. Wasson is 21 weeks pregnant. Her boyfriend, Skylar White, is accused of shooting her on Friday. According to court documents, White told his mother the shooting was an accident. Right now, he faces attempted murder and criminal recklessness charges. IMPD says Chief Brian Roach will give an update at 1 o'clock tomorrow on last week's deadly shooting during a traffic stop. Investigators say officers stopped a vehicle at 42nd and Brentwood around 8.15 Friday evening. Police say a passenger identified as 45-year-old Deshaun Downing produced a gun and officers responded by shooting and killing him. The driver was taken into custody and is cooperating with investigators. Community activists tell RTV6 they plan on holding another rally this week, demanding justice for Downing. Will backlash over a new business in Muncie lead to change? The city council plans to discuss this issue at its next meeting on August 20th. Councilors are now asking for more information about a steel dust recycling plant. After hundreds of people attended last night's meeting voicing health and pollution concerns, the council has already approved whale sustainable products. The Indiana Department of Environmental Management still has to approve that permit. An animal welfare group is pushing for tougher penalties for pet owners who fail to follow the rules. Gall 6 investigates Kara Kenny's story about the death of a pit bull mix is striking a nerve with a lot of people who say it is time for change. The fine for a first care and treatment violation in Indianapolis is $25. Friends of Indianapolis Dogs Outside says that is way too low. The pit bull mix flash died after being tethered outside in the hot sun. His owner, Melinda Ryan, admitted Monday to three care and treatment ordinance violations. Her punishment? A $100 fine plus court costs. That just seems ridiculously low. I mean, what is that? That's, you know, that's a dinner out. You know, that's just, that's nothing. That's, you know, so, you know, if you raise it to something that is going to hit people in the pocketbook a little bit more, 200 on the first offense, that seems like, okay, people, you know, people are going to take that a little more seriously. FIDO is proposing that $200 initial fine and $500 for subsequent violations. Working for URTV6 is giving you an exclusive look at how police are going undercover to catch drivers who are putting children's lives at risk. We rode along with Muncie officers as they followed school buses on their routes. Police and parents say the biggest issue is drivers passing buses when the stop arm is out.
almost every day. People are impatient. They they don't understand that these kids are crossing. You can hit them. That's it. He knew the rules. Uh, and I asked him, I said, you, I mean, you saw the arm. Yes. I just, I thought it was okay. I don't want my children dead. I don't want them, you know, in the hospital. Muncie Police and 38 other law enforcement agencies in Indiana received a state grant this year to pay officers overtime to specific, uh, specifically enforce school bus laws. That includes the Howard County Sheriff's Office. You have until the end of September to weigh in on a proposal that could make it tougher for millions of people to feed their families. The USDA wants to remove a loophole that could allow people to take advantage of SNAP benefits, formerly known as food stamps. That change would also undo an Indiana law that raises the limit of assets. A person can have and still receive benefits from about $2,000 to $5,000. So for example, if you have $3,000 in savings but otherwise qualifying for SNAP, you would no longer qualify. The executive director of the nonprofit group Feeding Indiana's Hungry says this will set people back. This is not sound policy. It's something that the administration is doing above and beyond what Congress has asked them to do. And it's essentially going to provide less services for three million Americans who need help getting food to their tables. If you want to share your opinion on this issue before a decision is made, go to the RTV6 app and click on this story. An historic bridge will be closed even longer than expected, and the city is acknowledging the project has taken way too long. The Central Avenue Bridge over Fall Creek will hopefully open in a few weeks, according to the Department of Public Works. DPW wanted to open the bridge last month. The city is now working with the Department of Transportation to get the contractor to work a little faster. The Pacers are hiring Hoosiers. Coming up, the easy way you can apply to be part of the team at Bankers Life Fieldhouse. And next, why a central Indiana school district is encouraging parents and students to be vigilant, vigilant excuse me, at bus stops. You're watching RTV 6 News at 11. Jetta, Tiguan, and Select Atlas models. This is RTV 6 News at 11, working for you. New at 11, a warning to be extra alert at the bus stop after a man reportedly tried to lure a student into his car on the south side. Perry Township School says an elementary school student told her bus driver a man in a car pulled up to her stop on Shelby Street at Thompson Road around 8.15 this morning and said her bus was going to be late. The man then offered to take her to school. She did not go with him. The vehicle is described as a small red four-door car with a baby in the back seat. Anyone with information is asked to call IMPD at 317-327-3811. A suspended one-year sentence, that's the punishment for two-time Indianapolis 500 winner Al Unser Jr. after pleading guilty to drunk driving car charges. In May, police arrested the now-retired race car driver in Avon on suspicion of driving while intoxicated. Deputies say Unser Jr. stumbled and fell down an embankment when officers were giving him commands and refused field sobriety tests. Now to hiring Hoosiers, connecting you to career opportunities across central Indiana. A couple of prominent job fairs are coming up. The 10th annual Central Indiana Job Fair will be held from 10 to 2 Thursday at the Ivy Tech Culinary and Conference Center on North Meridian Street. Around 130 employers will be there. Organizers say more than 60% of those employers offer tuition benefits. The event is free and open to the public. And Pacer Sports and Entertainment is hiring part-time employees. You can learn more about those positions and apply at a job fair at Bankers Life Fieldhouse next Wednesday, August 14th. That goes from 4 to 7. Opportunities include working as an usher in guest relations, the team store, or the box office. As students head back to school, hiring Hoosiers is highlighting programs that help them prepare to go from classroom to career. One paid internship program pairs students up with a local, local nonprofit organization like New Fields. Every summer, four high school juniors and seniors are picked for the Bank of America Student Leaders Program. This year's group is learning what it takes to run a nonprofit from cleaning up the new fields grounds to researching how to connect with younger audiences. We've worked on making projects each week to present and so we've each gotten a different chance to be the leader and so it gives you a lot of like real world experience. I never really realized how a nonprofit works and it takes a lot of people to keep this engine running. So it's kind of cool getting behind the scenes and seeing all the other things Newfields has to offer. Participants also get to meet the CEO of Bank of America and attend a national summit in Washington DC. Applications for next year's summer internship sh should be available between November and January. For more
more information about the program or any opportunities that you see on our TV6, go to HiringHoosiers.com. Well, we continue to celebrate a special milestone. Tomorrow will mark 30 years on the air at RTV6 for our own Kevin Gregory. And you're probably used to seeing Kevin right now on the news at 11, but it was not always that way. When he started in 1989, he joined Tracy Horth on the morning shift, which means a very early wake up call. She picks up the story from there. We were here early in the morning and neither of us adjust, were adjusting well to that schedule. and. Uh, Kevin Gregory, he, he, I'll never forget him saying, it's really a sad thing when the first thing you think about when you wake up in the morning is when you can go back to bed. <laughs> but you know what? Kevin Gregory is sunshine. Kevin Gregory is, I mean, he, his personality is amazing to me. And, um, and he is so good at what he does. <laughs> <laughs> I used to ask myself the same thing, right? If you've been on the morning oh, shift, that, that is the first question you do ask. The funny thing is now I go to bed when I used uh -huh. to get up. Right, yeah. I'll, I'll go home after the late news, probably be up till 2.30. You are such the night like owl that. now. So, uh, Tracy enjoyed working with you. It feels like yesterday, and of course it was right here in this studio as well. All right, now I'll try and live up to that. She said I was good. Let me see how I can Let's do Let's see, it. right? Uh, not as good as it could have been today. As far as the rainfall, you'd like to see that more widespread. It was just localized and heavy and it's still raining in spots, I'll find that for you. 72 in Tipton, it's 67 right now in Crawfordsville. Temperatures will not cool too much tonight, generally staying in the mid 60s. Been following the lightning, that's where you'll find the heaviest rainfall. Sullivan, heavy rainfall in the southern half of the county there and now just starting to fall apart finally in Bartholomew County. The rain has really let up between Columbus and Seymour, continues with a little more oomph just to the south of Seymour, that will cross uh, I-65 in the southern portion of Jackson County. Didn't have rain tonight, you won't have it tomorrow. It's Thursday, the next chance we'll see showers and thunderstorms, and especially north and east of Indy as far as any storms of strength. Then we're dry Friday through the weekend. Temperature trend, tomorrow a nice breeze with the 84 degrees. The thunderstorm potential also arrives with our warmest day the rest of the work week. And Friday through the weekend, it will be comfortable, although temperatures creep back up a little bit. Tomorrow, a few more clouds in the morning. We work on more sunshine as we go to midday. Temperature right at 80. And and then in the afternoon, a mixture of clouds and sunshine. Overall, we'll call it mostly sunny. Again, with that west-northwest breeze, the air will be a little drier, the humidity dropping. That wind will be 10 to 15 miles per hour at times through the day. Average temperature, 83 degrees. We're right at that mark or a little above. We'll be much above that as we get to Thursday. 88, the afternoon high. Should be late afternoon that thunderstorms begin to develop. As we show you in the morning hours, just a few clouds around go through one o'clock in the afternoon couple of showers they advance a little more and cover more territory indianapolis to richmond north at four o'clock a few of those could be on the strong side we'll keep our eye on that beyond that as we look at thursday highs upper 80s the warmer it feels thursday the cooler it will feel on friday that's the trade-off and then into the weekend 84 saturday on sunday temperature still in the mid 80s lots of sunshine on both days should also point out saturday Saturday morning will start at 60 for the morning low. Early next week, chance for thunderstorms returns. Better chance Monday night than on Tuesday. Chance of thunderstorms and temperatures will be in the mid 80s. Here's your seven day forecast. Again, the thunderstorms departing to the south. Maybe you've seen the lightning even in central Indiana as you look south. Dry Wednesday, that chance for thunderstorms Thursday. Then at least another three day dry stretch, maybe longer with the chance for thunderstorms not really increasing too much until Monday night into Tuesday. I think Tracy was right. You're good. Oh, well, thank you. Do good. you agree? He's a he's just mm. sunshine. Oh, yeah, yeah. Here's <laughs> what I am right good at up. is staying on time, which allows Dave to win all the Emmys. All right, hold right into the station. <laughs> <laughs> for the first person I thank every time, Kevin Gregory for staying on time. Uh, Colts back at camp today. They got a preseason game coming up on Thursday. And a little straight line fever for you tonight. Sort of how funny car champ Jared Todd at the right of his life, the spotlight for the news at 11. Continue. At Ross, yes for less. Day 
11 already of Colts camp working inside for the first time. Head coach Frank Reich saying that Andrew Luck has been working with some different exercises. So things looking positive for that strained left calf. Earliest though we might see him back at practice is Saturday when camp resumes after Thursday night's preseason opener up in Buffalo. Well, good evening. Before the regular season begins for the Colts, there's the U.S. Nationals. NHRA back in Brownsburg. Funny car uh, driver and champ J.R. Todd, two-time defending funny car champ out there on the west side, but for a few minutes had to take a back seat. Brad Brown, the Sports Extra Spotlight. J.R. Todd is used to going fast, very, very fast. He's got him. J.R. Todd. 330 miles an hour, not uncommon for the two-time U.S. Nationals funny car champion. On this day at the track, JR is back in his fire suit, ready to roll. But for this particular ride, JR will be the passenger for two very special laps around the brickyard. None other than Mario Andretti behind the wheel of the IndyCar two seater. The speed's only about half of what JR gets on a regular work day. Getting a chance to sit back and enjoy a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity even leaves a national champ breathless at the end. Well, how was it? That was awesome. You're not used to being a passenger. <laughs> how was that, though? That, uh, that was nuts. That was a different kind of sensation compared to what we do. I mean, you're going into the corner basically wide open that thing. You got the best driver in the world driving you, but uh, I don't like being in something I'm not in control of, but I'll let that one slide when it's Mario Andretti. That, uh, that was awesome. Soon, JR will be back at Indy, back at his biggest race of the year. And oh yeah, he'll be behind the wheel for that one. We go fast, we pull a lot of Gs, but it's in a straight line. We don't deal with, uh, with lateral Gs like that, going into a corner, your head's pinned up against the side like that. Ours is trying to get pinned back to, uh, to the back of the car, but no, it's just uh, a totally different sensation. That's by far the fastest I've gone turning left that I can think of, but uh, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. I'd love to do it again. At the Speedway, Brad Brown, RTV6 Sports. JR currently eighth in points. NHRA U.S. Nationals gets started August 30th at Lucas Oil Raceway. Very cool. Hey, finally tonight, first and foremost, for Indy 500 winner Simon Pagino is a usual fun on social media posting this. Air Pagino jumping next to the pork Warner trophy. That led to a hashtag Simon Pagino sitting on things. Our friend NASCAR Chasm starting it all. That's, of course, Norman the dog. Uh, Simon sitting on Roger Pinsky's shoulder. Mini Simon. <laughs> kind of an E.T. thing going on here. <laughs> Simon sitting on NASCAR teammate Ryan Blamey. Don't try this at home. They are professionals. Why not Game of Thrones? <laughs> and finally, watching sculptor Will Barons complete oh, yes. Simon's likeness for the Borg Warner Trophy. One thing's for sure, Simon enjoying life as the Indy 500 champ. <laughs> Obviously. The News 10 11 continues after this. <laughs> at Zaxby's. Firefighters in northern Indiana saved a pair of masked bandits over the weekend, but not the criminal kind. The South Bend Fire Department posted this video of raccoons climbing down a ladder to escape from a burning building. Crews set up the ladder to help the animals. If you're wondering why firefighters will go to the trouble to save raccoons, the department says saving lives is a priority on a fire scene. The first one was out of there. <laughs> and they knew exactly like, what to do. <laughs> Impressive. They were big, though. It's yeah. like they rehearsed it. You know. <laughs> okay, yeah, I've got on the ladder, no problem. I hope they're not suspects in the fire. <laughs> Masked bandits. <laughs> yeah. As you heard. Good night. Good night. Wow.